Hey everyone, and thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name is Justin. It's been a little bit since I've made a video here. Um, quite frankly, wasn't quite sure uh, what direction I was going to go in with this channel, whether it was something I was going to try to keep up with, uh, take some time away from, just do sporadically. Um, it was kind of up in the air. Uh, I know a lot has happened since my last video here. Wasn't really... Um, on my mind to make another video anytime soon just because I don't know I I don't do this for views I don't do it for subscribers those are really really great to have and I know I love the validation but again this is just more so for me being able to just talk about hockey there's nothing I love more than talking about the Leafs and the NHL um, and just especially when I've got something to get off my chest and vent about I love being able to go on and doing so but again wasn't really sure what I was going to do next um, and then I got a comment on my last video very recently that really made me smile, really happy, just essentially asking for me to make more content. And that's something I didn't know that there was any demand for. I didn't think that, you know, what I did was anything special, um, but that comment really made my day, made me smile and rejuvenized me. It made me wanna come back on and continue making some content. So a uh, big shout out to Zach. Thank you so much for commenting, uh, for your loyalty and appreciation. Uh, this one's for you, and I'm going to try to get back on the horse here and continue as we head into a very eventful offseason for the Toronto Maple Leafs. So like I said, it's been a little bit of time since I've made a video on this channel. In fact, the last video I made was the Toronto Maple Leafs finally won a playoff series for the first time in 19 years, and how happy I was, and how happy the city was, and how optimistic we were. Uh, just for a lot to happen since. Obviously, we played the Florida Panthers in round two, lost in five games, four games to one, uh, pretty embarrassing fashion. <laughs> then there was a whole lot of conversation about what's next with this team. Is the core four gone? Are people getting fired? Everybody thought Kyle Dubas was back. Then we had the press conference and where, you know, Dubas made some comments that ultimately got him fired. And then we went to a searching period of a new GM. And ultimately where we stand today is, We've just hired Brad Treliving on board as our new general manager and trying to figure out what happens here because it's so up in the air, nobody knows. That's a ton that I missed out on, a ton that I really, really regret not hopping on and making contact because I had a ton of opinions on it. I just didn't get around to it, but I'm hoping to catch up a little bit with this video here. So what exactly do we talk about today? Again, there's just been so much that's happened where do I concentrate my time? I can't talk about it at all. I think we're just going to go with overall, how do we feel about Brad Tree Living coming in and taking over Kyle Dubas? So uh, to backtrack a bit, as I'm sure most of you know, if you've been following my content, I'm a big Kyle Dubas fan. Big, big fan of what he does. And I'm really happy for him uh, and getting a presidency role in Pittsburgh with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Great for him. It's obviously something he wanted. It was something he wanted more autonomy. Uh, more power. He's definitely going to get that, obviously, in Pittsburgh. Um, and I was really, really, really sad to see him go. I was not a happy camper when we heard about the whole, you know, Brendan Shanahan press conference and the decision to let him go because I thought he did everything he could do year after year, but this year especially, to make this team as good as they were. And then to also hear, you know, it wasn't necessarily about the decisions he made and the moves he made, but more so just about in principle. And then, you know, the more I think about it, Kyle Dubas screwed himself over. That's the reality of the situation. He talked himself into a corner. I thought, you know, good on him for being so honest, but the way he talked about the situation and not being 100% sure about returning as a general manager, there was no doubt some concern there. Even as a diehard uh, Kyle Dubas fan, you have to admit it. You know, this is a message that Brendan Shanahan had to send, not only for him, uh, for Kyle Dubas, but for everybody in the organization. I think this is the exact message that these players in particular have needed to hear for years now. Essentially, you're either in 100%, you want to be here, you want to win here, or we don't tolerate you, and we're not going to, you know just bend over and give you whatever you want so that you can stay and be happy and jolly and merry, but we're never going to win with that kind of mentality. And hopefully this is now the expectation that's sent through for the players, for the rest of the staff. You're here to win. You're here because you want to. You are not here because we're just going to give you whatever you want. So critical message. Very sad Dubas is gone, but I actually completely understand it. 
But then after that decision comes out, I'm, you know, freaking out, essentially. Where does this team go from here? I didn't see any candidates that were in the free agency market of general managers that stood out as, oh, you know what, I'd be extremely excited if we got that guy. And, you know, I thought, to be honest, and I don't think I was the only one to think this, maybe this organization is taking a really, really hard turn to a route back to a team that doesn't know what they're doing. You know, for the last seven years, the Leafs have been a very competent organization. Uh, no matter though we haven't had the success, the team has been completely committed to winning and com committed to success and committed to getting better. And that's something that we have not had the luxury of for the majority of my life with the Toronto Maple Leafs. So that was something I didn't want to take for granted and in a direction I wanted to stay in. I didn't want this organization to go back to being kind of a mess behind closed doors. And I thought there was the potential of doing that uh, when there was the announcement that it was Brad Tree Living's job uh, for the for the losing. I, I, I don't know, it didn't make me any more excited or hopeful for the future than I was when we had Kyle Dubas. And then I heard his press conference and I'll be honest, I was thoroughly impressed with what he had to say. I thought his demeanor was exactly what this team needs. It, he seems like a very genuine, genuine guy. And I believe the reports that Brad Tree Living is a very relationship-oriented person. And that, I think, is extremely important in general manager. You need to have rapport with your players and respect and a relationship with your players. But moreover, you need to have that with the agents. You need to have that with, you know, attracting free agents. You need to have that with other general managers in the league. And it's no secret that Kyle Dubas, from the perspective of everybody else in the league, all the other GMs in the league was, you know, this kid, new to the league, works specifically for the Leafs. We're not going to do this guy any favors. In fact, we're kind of going to take liberties at him. There's the reports about the, the waiver wire anytime a Leafs player gets put on the waivers. Someone else is going to pick them up just for the sake of screwing over the Leafs. And that was partly because I think Kyle Dubas was our main man. Well, now we've got a guy that is respected in this league. He's got a long tenure as a general manager in the NHL. And he's got strong relationships with the other GMs in this league. And I'm hoping that that actually kind of turns the tides. It opens up new trading partners for us. It opens up new avenues and new opportunities that this team didn't have under Kyle Dubas's tenure. So the more that I've thought about it, the more that I soaked in exactly what Tree Living said in the press conference, which wasn't anything spectacular, but just his demeanor, the way he talked, the way he discussed his view of this team, it at the very least gave me the comfort of thinking, I trust this guy to go do what he can do and try to impress me. I'm not saying the standard that this team is going to necessarily get better under Brad Tree Living, uh, but I'm going to give him an open mind and every bit of my faith until he loses it. Now, maybe he fails to sign one of the big four and they walk in free agency, or maybe he tries to pull off a trade and it's a huge swing and a miss. Maybe he doesn't bring in the right unrestricted free agents because we're heading into free agency and there's a lot of people on the board for the Leafs that are potentially leaving. Uh, so he definitely has areas that could let me down and maybe I'll change my mind in a couple of weeks, but I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt here, which I didn't think I was going to do when Dubas left. And I think as long as he can really ready the ship as we head into a really turmoil point in the Toronto Maple Leafs, then that's a job well done in my opinion. As far as what he can do, that's probably the biggest conflict in my mind right now. Um, I think Kyle Dubas has done pretty much everything he could do year after year, changing his philosophy without having success. And so if you were to maintain the core four, keep all four of them intact, what more can you do around them to create a winning team? Kyle Dubas, when he started out here, he was of the mindset of uh, attracting older players that have been around for a long time, have had playoff success, but have never had that cup because they, they hunger for it and the team's going to rally around them and really play for them. And I'm thinking of the likes of like Patrick Marlowe or Joe, Joe Thornton. And that didn't work out. So he pivoted. He went younger. He went with people that actually did have cup experience. And most notably this past uh, playoff where we had, you know, the likes of Ryan O'Reilly, Nola Chari. We had Luke Shen. We had those veteran presents that have been there, done that, and really rounded out this team. And still, look where we got. We did get through a round. Yay. We only got one win in the second round. Clearly not good enough. So 
what more could Brad Tree Living possibly do around this core that is going to drastically change the, identi the identity of this team and put them over the edge? I just, I don't see it. And I also don't see the decision to bring in a new general manager. Again, Kyle Dubas announced that he did ultimately want to stay with the Leafs and was then fired. So if you fire Kyle Dubas and bring someone else in, you are clearly not trying to run the same team back as what Kyle Dubas would do. That's not the point. If you were going to do that, I think you keep Kyle Dubas, you run with him, but you bring in someone else. And that whole idea is you bring in someone again with new connections, new relationships, new ideas, new perspective, and let them change this team. And I don't think that you can really consider him doing that much if he doesn't move one of those core four pieces. And that pains me to say, because I really love these four players. I've said it time and time again, I have nothing against the four players of the core four. I have everything against their contracts. I don't think you can win with $50 million tied into four players. It's just not sustainable, especially in the flat cap. And I know we're going up, going up a million dollars this year. Who knows how much that could grow uh, in the years to come. But as of right now, you cannot win with those contracts on the book. And I don't think Brad Trivling, Tree Living is going to get a whole bunch of guys in the UFA market that are going to take since, like significant hometown discounts or just discounts at all to come and win here. I just, it's not reasonable. It's not a good expectation. And I think it's time that we consider a big move. And I actually trust Tree Living in doing that because he has a record of making some significant changes to teams he's run in the past and has done a pretty good job with it. So in my opinion... Tree Living's number one order of business. He comes in, he already announced it in the press conference, but he's got to meet with the core four. He's got to understand exactly where they stand, exactly where their commitment is with this team, and understand that these players, if they're going to stick around, need to be A, 100% committed, and B, not trying to take any more money off the books than they already have. The only one that could possibly argue a promotion, in my opinion, is William Nylander. And I know everybody's talking about Austin Matthews deserves, you know, to be the highest player, paid player in the league. I get it. If you sign him to that, and I know that you will sign him to that. I don't think he deserves it. I don't think that the cap situation hasn't changed since these guys signed their last deals. When Matthews, Marner, Nylander, and Tavares signed their deals, the cap stayed flat after that. So in my opinion, the exact contracts that they've already signed, that they're currently on, is the exact value they should have for this next deal as the cap continues to go up because that was what we expected the last time they signed. The cap hasn't moved. Why do they deserve a bigger chunk? A bigger chunk out of, you know, they already take up half of the salary cap and you want a bigger slice? It's it's not sustainable. It's not going to work. But again, Austin Matthews is the caveat to that. William Nylander deserves a promotion. Do you Look at maybe moving Nylander. Do you maybe look at moving Marner? John Tavares is not leaving. I don't care what people say. I know he's not an $11 million player, but he's going to take a discount when he uh, expires this next deal. He's got a lot of work to do to figure out exactly where these players are at, what they see, what they plan on asking for. And if they ask for too much or if their vision isn't you know, aligned with the success of the Toronto Maple Leafs, it's time to explore moving them. I don't mean forcing a trade, I mean definitely exploring and maybe you do something in the middle of the season. I think the off season is definitely the most peak time that you can move a big contract like this. Tree Living is in a terrible position. He's either going to sign players to deals that, you know, if they don't offer them that, they're going to walk in free agency. So he's potentially going to overpay or he's going to move one of the big four players, potentially lose that deal, maybe win it, but it's not going to go over necessarily well with fans. He's kind of in a lose-lose situation, uh, so I'm going to try to look at the the positive viewpoint of whatever he does, because I think majority of Leafs fans and NHL fans as a whole are probably going to rip him for whatever he decides to do, because again, there's no winning here. Uh, the only thing we can hope for is that he makes the team better, and that doesn't necessarily mean better in the regular season, it means better in the playoffs. We need a lot more success than we've had in the last seven years. And even if we do make it past the first round again, we've got to get more than one win, especially against a team like the Florida Panthers, who credit are on a fantastic run. I don't want to take anything away from them. And I was shocked when they swept Carolina. I thought that was unbelievable. But Toronto, you got to win more games than that against the Florida Panthers. It's just, you know, you've waited this long to get through that first round just to put up that. You got to be better. So I'll look at the positive outlook. There's lots to come. You know, we got the draft coming up, then we got free agency. 
He's got a lot of decisions to make in a very short window. To me, the only thing he can really do for now is really explore looking at moving one of those big four. You gotta kind of figure that out before free agency because then you need to know, you know, what's your budget in free agency, who are you gonna attack? A lot of work, I don't, uh, I don't envy him at all in the position that he's in. But what are your thoughts on the hiring of Bradtree Living? What are your thoughts on what exactly he should be doing? What are your thoughts on you know, Sean Keefe? Is he gonna stick around? Is he gonna get fired? Your thoughts on Shanahan and the report of him having way more power than potentially he should? Just so much to talk about. Um, stay tuned because I'll be hopping on to make more videos very shortly as we go into, again, a very, very adventurous time. So thank you very much for clicking on this video and I'll see you in the next one.